Welcome to the Vault Podcast and Reviews, where music still matters. You can check out everything we're doing at facebook.com slash the vault rvws, youtube.com forward slash c forward slash the vault reviews. We're on Stitcher at the vault music one for Twitter at the vault reviews on Instagram and send us anything you feel like sending us the vault music one at gmail.com. It's time to talk about some country and no, it's not bro country. Today we're going to talk about George Jones' Walls Can Fall album from 1992. I love reviewing this 90s country stuff, and we'll touch on that because I have a soft spot for 90s country, and I didn't used to. But anyhow, check us out on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Check us out on YouTube, iTunes, Podomatic, Stitcher. Rate, review, like, subscribe, share. Tell everybody. Tell a friend. Tell your grandma. (laughs) Do it all. It's going to be a blast. All right, so Robbie... You're a George Jones fan. I'm pretty sure oh, you absolutely. are. Absolutely. Love George Jones. The possum. The possum. <laughs> you can't be – I mean, he was a, He was country music. You know, especially in the 90s, he was a drunk. He beat his wife. He made great music. He got a DUI. He had awesome hair. Awesome hair, man. He did. And he had a DUI on a lawnmower. I mean, that's country as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the man. And who wants to be called the possum? I, don't know. I, mean, I really. think he called himself that. I think he started that. I don't know where it came from. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. No, not at all. Because I mean, he's like a wild animal. Like. <laughs> Oh, that's the truth from from the stories. Yeah, that's the truth. No yeah. show. Jones. So this top this topped out on the Billboard 200 at 77. We did a recent show. Where West Side Connection was number two yeah. in 1996. So I mean, you know, that just kind of tells you where we've got two artists we've liked that appeared on the Billboard 200 in the 90s, compared to what we have now. Yeah. Dang. Oh, you only got what was it? 76 is what you said. 77 is what 77. I got. Yeah. Man, that's surprising. This is a this is a pretty good album. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it was kind of towards the tail end, sort of. I mean, um, the 90s was an interesting time for country music. You had a lot. Well, we'll just jump into it. I don't want to put out any spoilers. So. <laughs> um, one of the best opening tracks that I can remember, I Don't Need Your Rockin' Chair. It's a classic. Absolutely love this song. It's so good. And it's awesome that this album just starts off with uh, a song. Starts that- off with a banger. Right off the bat, you know, a club banger. Uh, but, you know, I Don't Need Your Rocking Chair is a great song, too. It's excellent. His lyrics are awesome. <laughs> I love him. And 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 I'm just going to go ahead and touch on it because I think this album sets the tone lyrically and musically to fit the prototypical 90s country. Yep. Um, you know, super cheesy play on words that they would use in their titles. Mm-hmm. Um, it sounded like every single person had the same band. Yeah, <laughs> like the, the way that it was produced, the way that it played, like everything was super, super clean. They always had the really good, like pedal steel guitar players. Oh yeah, them. the steel guitar work on this album is is cool too. They awesome. use quite a bit. Yeah, it's yeah. totally awesome, absolutely. And the songs are uh, they're stories, man. I mean, you can you can almost like if you have a good enough imagination, anyway, well, you can picture in your head what he's talking about in these songs. Uh, and that's well, and talking and talking about imagination. You know, we've done some of uh, the gangster rap reviews in the in the past few shows and we've talked about how believable they are yeah. i pretty much believe everything that's said in this album absolutely i mean he's uh and that's one thing country lacks too man nowadays it doesn't tell a story anymore and that's uh that to me that's one huge part of essential part for country music is storytelling storytelling you know is how it kind of brought stories to to life and music and they took that away from us Zan. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, you know, into my favorite track, I know I'm kind of skipping around, but my favorite track, The Bottle Let Me Down. Okay. You got the play, you got the classic kind of play on words title. Um, you got the kind of cheesy country lyrics you would expect to hear. That's probably a true story. Then you have the music. And this is another one that I kind of feel is one of those downer songs. Just yeah. the tones of the steel guitar being played and the tempo. Oh, man. You it's can just sit- like... You can sit by yourself and get whiskey drunk to this. Like kind of I music. feel like I'm falling off a bar stool just listening to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That was one of my favorite songs too. Actually, was the bottle let me down? He's what's he say? The uh, the one friend I thought I found. Yep. Tonight the bottle let me down. <laughs> it's like man, man, it was is uh, is a true song though too. At least it, feel, it felt true. Uh, oh, I believe it. Yeah, for sure. 
and it goes back, you know, we did uh, a little while back, we did that Johnny Winter thing. We we're talking about how you can feel it when people sing the blues. Well, country to me is almost an extension of the blues, at least older country is. And so when they sing these songs about heartache and, and stuff like that, especially George Jones, man, you can feel it. You know, you can tell that he's that he's feeling that pain. And uh, I, I love that. That's one of my favorite things about older country is uh, they hit you right in the feelers. You know, they, they make you feel what they're singing. And it's all believable for the most part. It is, especially when you know a little bit of background on the dude. <laughs> we're, talking, we're talking pre-2000s country for the most part. There's a, there's Sturgill Simpson and um, other artists that produce this kind of quality of country music where, you know, I, I believe what they're saying and I think they're singing with heart. This isn't like uh, Sam Hunt or any of this hip-hop talking about yeah. trucks and girls and tight jeans and stuff. This this is the, uh, the real stuff, so... Um, Cowboy other, Troy. Sorry. That's even better. That's even better than <laughs> Cowboy Troy is better than half of the stuff that's yeah. out now. So it's all so bad though. Um, yeah, um, I, I had a few really uh, favorite songs on this one. Uh, the Bottle Let Me Down was one of them. You Walked Across My Mind Again uh, was another one. And one thing I liked, really liked about this song was first off, any time a country song starts off with talking about waking up in jail, you know it's gonna be good. <laughs> Uh, this was this had all the elements of a great country song. Uh, he got drunk. He he thought of a girl. He broke a bottle. He broke the jukebox. He went to jail. You know that's country. Booze, heartbreak, destruction of property, jail. <laughs> I, I like there you it. go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it was it was a good song. It was another good story too. Um, my other favorite song was "Drink Me to Drive." Uh, there you go with the play on words. Or, or drive me to drink, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Still. <laughs> if you're going to drive me crazy, then drive me to drink. He said. There you go. Yeah, another one about heartache, man. He's got a lot of those. And I think it's just because he, I don't know, man. He, That's country music in the, eight, the 70s, 80s, and 90s. It's storytelling yeah. about drinking heartache and just wild, crazy stuff. I mean, when you get back to like Hank Sr., it's really, really about that. He's real sad. <laughs> a lot of downer music as far as that goes. But uh yeah those are my three favorite songs on this album man uh did you have any other favorites other than just the yeah that's a finally friday the last track on the album i yeah, made note of that one too that was a good this, one this <laughs> this comes into my mind every single friday i'm not lying that's cool. like like at some point in the morning after i get up whether i'm working or not that song pops into my head <laughs> and like so, some of the lyrics just are so corny uh but, <laughs> super cheese man super cheese you know <laughs> the money burning burning a hole in his jeans and party all weekend a... broke yeah. my monday <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man and there's this so sad because i know some people that actually live their lives like that so oh man and, it, <laughs> and obviously fun, george jones did it's a fun song too and he definitely did i would say that he did that a lot and woke up broke with a hangover a lot uh before he got a lot of money stacked up you know <laughs> playing them small bars and getting wasted in a strange town (laughs) so i'll transition from that into just talking about the music i think this is kind of a a total album so to speak as far as like music goes um you've got the stuff like i don't need your rocking chair and finally friday which you know could be radio friendly songs Mm -hmm. kind of a little bit more up tempo you know really catchy the bottle let me down a little bit of a downer song and still catchy like some really cool steel guitar parts in there yeah, and then there's some super super downer songs that are just like really <laughs> slow and like tearing my beer. Uh, like not yeah. that song, but I'm just talking like that kind of approach, you know, that, that yeah. you always hear. Those are my favorite country songs from back then. Those those real sad ones, not because I'm like depressed, you know, and get drunk. Right. Yeah. Stuff, but but I just really like them. And you know, sometimes you get you'd get a couple of drinks in you by yourself and play some George Jones. I used to do that at the bar all the time. That was lived down the street from a bar. I used to go there and sit and play George Jones on the jukebox and and get drunk there. Nobody else would be in that bar because that's how scummy it was. But hey, it was a good oh, time. I figured, you just, I figured you just ran everybody else off with the music because you weren't. Oh, playing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Some rock. Some some disturbed or something in there. disturbed or um like some like ludicrous if he was right. popular had the hit single out or something yeah yeah no no there was just nobody in there and i am surprised that it was still in business but uh but they had all the george jones albums i could ever want so i played a lot of that a lot of hank three and did my, i did my fair share oh hank that. three in a jukebox that's pretty good yeah for sure right they had all of them all hank right so th- let's talk about the production a little bit like i said earlier crisp clear um, Perfect. 
you can easily pick out every single instrument in every oh, single yeah. song. And that's one thing that I love. A lot of times the production kind of will water down one or the other where you can't hear, you know, the guitar's too high or the bass is too high or the vocals overpower everything. This is completely perfect. And I know a lot yeah. of people don't like crisp, clear recording, but I think for the, the 90s country, I think it was perfect. It was. I mean, because you can pull the steel guitar out of it, which is stu- definitely important. And, and old country music like that, I mean, being able to distinguish all the different instruments is uh, pretty important, you know, because they all play a key role. Let's talk about the vocals a little bit. You know, George Jones has that distinct sound where he's uh, – one thing I like, I don't even know how to describe it, and I know most people who are George Jones fans will know what I'm talking about. He'll just kind of be singing, but then when he goes into these higher parts, it's it's almost like this uh, like whining of, of mm-hmm. a sort. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, definitely. He, um, I I mean, I don't think he can do much wrong either. You know, I mean, he's such a, such a great vocalist, such a great singer, and the production on his voice and everything is, like you said, it's perfect. You know, there's – I don't think he really uh, could improve much <laughs> anywhere on the album. So do you have any negatives on this one? I don't, man. It's hard to say a bad word about the possum. You know, the man is a country god, a country music god, so in my opinion. So I'd, I honestly don't have um, a negative about this album. So the only negatives I have, and this maybe is nitpicking, <laughs> but there was only a handful of songs that stood out to me as, like, these are awesome. Like, yeah. Even, uh, like, I'm going to use Sturgill Simpson for his example. Um, you know, his albums, like, almost every song is great. Uh, Hank mm-hmm. 3, almost every song is great. Yep. This one, they're all good, but there was only, like, four that were great, in my opinion. So I had to knock it down, you know, a little bit for that, but uh, still really solid. So uh, anything else you got on it that you want to touch on before we give it a rating? Uh, no, man. I think we touched on it all. All right, one star being the worst, five stars being the best. What'd you give this one? I gave this one a five out of five. Uh, Wow! (laughs) I I loved this album. I had never heard this whole album. I think I'd only heard um, I Don't Need Your Rocking Chair. And so other than that, these songs were brand new to me. Uh, And like I said, I thought I had heard all George Jones' music, but I love this album from beginning to end. I'd listen to it again. I add it to my playlist on Spotify so I can listen to it later. Um, this is one of my favorite albums we've had a chance to review so far. I really dug it, liked it a lot. Like I said, George Jones is one of my favorite. I'm a huge fan of the man. All right, I'm going to give this album a three and three quarters, and I I had to knock it down because oh. there just wasn't enough standout songs on there. Some of the slower songs, like, uh, you remember how we were talking about St. Vitus, how you kind of got lost gonna... in the slower songs? Yeah, that's yeah. Kinda how, exactly. That's kind of how I was in these in the slower, the slower, like, heartbreak songs. Yeah, see, like I said, those are my favorite. And like, and in Doom, those slower ones were your favorite. That's that's funny how it twists. And uh, when I gave that one, like, what I give it a two. When I did that, you're like, oh, what a two. <laughs> so I, I feel I feel where you're coming from now. When I rated this one a five, and you gave it a. Let me put that into perspective <laughs> on how why I like you know the Doom slow stuff versus the country slow stuff. Okay, when I listened to like that Saint Vitus, uh, uh, what song was it that we were talking Shoot, about? Shooting uh, gallery. Shooting gallery, yeah. Um, when I was listening to that, I felt like I was like floating or dragging my feet like a zombie, like yeah. you know, like I'm just totally like, <laughs> drooling on myself and everything. And for some reason, I think that that feels uh, that feeling feels cool. When right. I hear some of these, I feel like an old lady falling asleep in church. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, um, that's... like because it's it's still super slow, but it's like. Yeah, uh, it's just not doing anything. Just kind of floating. You know? <laughs> I loved it, man. Those are my favorites. I just like the, yeah, you know, like I said, the lyrics with what they're talking about. But hey, I get it. You know, uh, I see why. You know how we differ. I like that. That's, that's yeah. And that's you know what we just what we just said. Maybe that's going to help somebody else. Um, you know, it's very important to kind of distinguish the way music makes you feel, no matter what genre it is. You know, look what we just now talked about. Yeah. Uh, that's. When I talk music with your average fan or your average person, they don't get that into it, or you can start yeah, describing sure. things like the way that makes you feel. So, um, yeah, that average is out to just under four and a half if we're going to be technical on the math. So that's pretty yeah. solid, I think, for a 1992 country album. Yeah, that's definitely solid. Can't go wrong with that. And it's also sad that we don't have more country like this on the radio now. 
That's true. I don't think I've ever heard Sturgill Simpson on the radio. He's one of my and favorite. And you're not favorite. going to. By the way, we can't plug that guy enough. Guys, right. if you haven't heard Sturgill Simpson and you like classic country, oh, shoot, if you like bro country and, okay. you know, if you just like that stuff, you're probably going to dig him. So check that out. And this is definitely going to be an album to check out. It um, doesn't matter how old it is. Even if you don't like country, give this one a shot. I, I think mm-hmm. it's kind of the production on it alone is enough to make somebody possibly like it. And yeah. maybe go ch- go backwards and check out some of his older stuff too. Yeah, and it just gets better from before this, even so. Yeah, I agree. Although I am partial to the '90s sound, like because you, mm-hmm. uh, which we're, I, I can't wait to review more of that stuff. You know, Garth Brooks, Aaron Tippin, Joe Diffie, Travis Tritt. Oh yeah, T R O U B L E. That was a great one, dude. These, there were so many good. Ones. I love Brooks and Dunn. I mean, Alan hey, I'm, I like Billy Ray Cyrus. Billy Ray Cyrus. I mean, uh, Dwight Yoakam was another really good one. Oh my goodness! Yeah, we we we're gonna have to do a whole show on country, apparently. Yeah, we we should we should. <laughs> all right, guys, make sure to check out all of our past reviews. You can check out all that stuff on YouTube. We're, we'd like to get a lot of that stuff going on iTunes and Stitcher and Podomatic, but you know it costs money to have the bandwidth hosting and the storage and we're running on a shoestring budget right now so (laughs) hopefully we're going to have some ways you can contribute uh right now if you go to the shop now tab on our facebook page you can find out ways to contribute monetarily to help us get all those past shows on the mp3 format so you can listen to them on your phone on stitcher and podomatic and itunes but also keep spreading the word. That's the way we're going to build up more fans to hopefully get some more money driven so we can yeah. make everything better. Tell, um, your, tell your friends and share our videos, please. <laughs> yeah, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, use the hashtags, Music Still Matters. Share, talk about it, comment. What do you think of this album? You know, Do you like George Jones? Do you hate George Jones? Let us know somewhere on social media when we post this what you think. So until the next review, see you guys later.